Hey guys, this is Caleb, and you're watching The Future Millionaire Teacher. Okay, so a big update. Uh, on Christmas, just a couple days ago, I finally paid off the last of my student loans. So overall, I paid off $78,000 in 41 months. So now I've only got $12,500 of debt left, um, a small loan from the bank of mom and dad, and a couple thousand dollars to pay off my car. Hopefully I'll have all of that done by June. So how often do we hear from all of the older people, all those boomers, that the reason we can't get ahead financially is because of our avocado toast, our brunches, our mimosas, and our fancy coffees. So I realized that it's not necessarily the avocado toast or going out for coffee every day that keeps you, you know, financially in the hole or keeps you from paying down your debt. I realized that for me personally, I have what I've kind of now retroactively calling the $30 rule. And I looked back at my previous months and realized that my purchases that were over $30 were all budgeted for. They were all planned, with only a few exceptions. So what I want to do is I want to look in this video back at a couple months of my, of my actual purchases, kind of go back and look at what I spent my money on, and we're going to see how many of my purchases over $30 were planned for. And then I'm going to challenge you to go back and look at your purchases. How many purchases over $30 do you have? They're little budget breakers, little budget busters that will kind of knock you out of your way. So looking first, these are all of the purchases that I made in December of 2019, this month to date. Now the first thing I want to do is filter out all of my bills. These are This is rent, insurance, uh, phone bill, water bill, all of my subscriptions. This is the stuff that I spend every month. You'll notice that there's just a couple transactions here. And moving right along, I want to go to the next, which is the largest subject, the, the largest area. This is restaurants and gas stations and groceries. When I make purchases in this area, I notice that all my restaurant purchases are usually under $20. All my grocery purchases are somewhere in the ballpark of $20 to $90, depending on you know how much I'm going to go shopping for that day. And all of my gas purchases are usually around $20. This is the biggest area, but I also budget specifically for this area. Next, if I filter out in orange, I'm going to filter out all of my miscellaneous items. These are purchases that are under $20, or their purchases that I know that I'm going to make every month. For example, um, when I paid up, have somebody walk my dog if I'm going to be at work for you know the whole day, or, or a haircut, or if I want to treat myself to uh, going to the movies. This is all my miscellaneous stuff. Notice that most of these purchases are under twenty dollars. So every month is going to have its own specific needs, its own specific purchases. So for example, in December, you're going to go buy Christmas presents. So you'll see here I've got a Secret Santa purchase. I also went to Hawaii with my boyfriend, he's a flight attendant so I didn't have to pay for the ticket or the hotel, which was kind of sweet, but I didn't go out to eat and I budgeted specifically for that. Moving right along, in red we have all of the debt payment. This is all of the payments that I made throughout the course of the month on, rather, uh, on my student loans and my car. And what you're left with are these few purchases that don't really fall into a specific category. These are what I call the budget busters, these are my purchases over 30 that can really, really ruin a budget. Now I try to keep these purchases to under three to five times a month. So you'll see, uh, I went ahead and bought my NBC Sports Gold package so I could continue watching soccer. Um, I went, I got, I got lazy one night and had Thai food delivered. And then there were a couple times where I went out to eat and spent a little more on, you know, an appetizer and dessert and drinks than I probably should have. But in the entire month, there were only four purchases that I didn't specifically budget for. Now, taking a quicker look, a much quicker look at November, you'll see that my purchases, about the same amount of purchases, obviously the bills and the rent, pretty much the exact same, a lot of similarities with all the restaurants and groceries and gas, a lot of similarities with the miscellaneous items like dog walking or paying for parking or the random pair of gloves I had to buy when it was cold, basically the similar amount of miscellaneous purchases, but you'll look here at the specific purchases to November. On the right, I ended up taking a work trip for the state marching contest. Uh, a lot of that got reimbursed, but these are all my specific purchases to the month. In the middle column, you'll see that I went with my boyfriend on an over, overnight trip to Savannah, Georgia. Again, didn't have to pay for the plane or the hotel, just paid for a couple restaurants. But on the left, you'll notice that I got sick and had to go to the ER and the doctor and had to go buy some meds. So those purchases really took out of my surplus. And you'll see we've got all of my remaining debt purchases and what I'm left with in the entire month was only one purchase, one purchase out of the entire month that I did not budget for that went over $30. And that was for a super, super cute blanket that I bought for one of my students and it was the only purchase in the entire month that I went over. Just for fun, I went all the way back and picked a random month and I looked at April. And these are all of my purchases in April already sorted out, already highlighted. Pretty similar breakdown of categories and what I was left with was just 
two purchases in the entire month of April. Now these were super high purchase items and they really, really busted my budget here, but the quantity of purchases over $30 in the month of April was really, really kept to a minimum. So for me, the $30 rule keeps me from going out of my budget. It keeps me from buying too many things that I don't really need, like maybe a new sweatshirt, a new pair of shoes, or picking up the next round of drinks when we go out to eat. The $30 rule keeps me in check. It keeps my budget in line. And because I plan for specific things in each given month, whether or not it's a uh, buying Christmas presents or taking a, a trip on a, on a convention, I make sure that my budget is built accurately ahead of time and that I limit my $30 purchases. And when I do have a budget breaker and I go over budget or I go out of my budget, I try to keep those transactions limited. I wonder for you guys, how many times you go over your budget or how many times you make a $30 purchase and don't even think about it. It quickly adds up. So in the comments below, let me know what your budget breakers are. What are your weak points? What challenges you to stay in your budget? And obviously, uh, go ahead and hit the like button, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and thanks for watching.